Hi, church family at Brentwood Baptist. It is a great honor for me to be invited back here on the pulpit to preach God's word to you. It is a delightful thing whenever I have the opportunity to, to preach the word of God, of course, majorly in Chinese language, but occasionally in this beautiful American English language. It is a great honor for me to be with you and worshiping God with you. Also, uh, it is also a great privilege for me to introduce my family. I have two daughters. Both are married and live in Atlanta. This is the first time to come visit me and my wife. And they are here with us in the congregation. I would like for them just to stand up for you to see them and welcome them in the Lord. That's my daughter, too, then. And my son-in-law, my two son-in-laws, uh, Max and Cole, and my grandson, Graham, who is only six years old. I cannot communicate with him in Mandarin Chinese. The English language I can use is English, so it's good that he is here listening to Granddaddy preaching God's word. So good to have you here. Now, in honor of reading God's word, let us stand and read the word of God together. This time we are going to read it in unison. First, we are reading Ephesians chapter 5, verses 14 through 20. And then the next passage is one verse from Psalm 90, verse 12. For what makes everything clear is light. Therefore, it is said, get up, sleeper, and rise up from the dead, and the Messiah will shine on you. Pay careful attention then how you walk not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless actions, but be filled by the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music from your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 90, 12. Teach us to number our days carefully so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. This is God's word for God's people. Hear it, believe it, and live eternally. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Now, we all know tomorrow is Memorial Day. And with great expectation, we, we all want to celebrate the Memorial Day. It is a great American holiday. And about two weeks ago in our preaching team, we were talking about today's Bible passage. So one question was raised. When you decided on every Sunday's Bible passage, did you have in mind particularly for the Memorial Sunday? And everybody fell silent. Finally, the answer came. We could only say that God does use our clumsiness in blessing our work. In other words, 
they didn't think about Memorial Sunday, but God led the team to decide in today's worship service, we are going to read Psalm 90, verse 12. Teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And today in the preaching time, I want to dig deep into Psalm 90 as well as the passage in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 14 through 20, because I discover that there is a connection between Psalm 90 and Ephesians chapter 5, 14 through 20. They both talk about wisdom. And this is what we need. We need wisdom by fearing the Lord, the God and maker of heaven and earth. We need wisdom to know this God and live a wise life. Now, the Chinese people like wisdom. Throughout 5,000 history, people in China are trying every way to gain wisdom. But too bad. If they don't know God, the creator of heaven and earth, they waste all their time. Amen. They don't get the true wisdom that only the God of the Bible can give us. Amen. Well, you know, in the history of China, about 1,500 years ago, there was a very wise king and a very nice emperor. When he looked at his kingdom and he saw the people suffering from everything, so he was trying to find wisdom. So much so, he sent a team to go to India because they believe that somehow in India there are sages or wise people. So they went to India and those people brought back to China Buddhism. <laughs> they brought back to China the Buddhist monks and they started to teach Chinese people so much so until now, if you talk to some Chinese, you meet them on the street, you tell, ask them, what is your religion? Buddhism. But Buddhism doesn't teach us true hope and wisdom. In fact, the core thinking of Buddhism is pessimism and nihilism. Because the Buddhists teach the people that everything is empty and life is an endless reincarnation. You listen to this term, re endless reincarnation. In fact, they were trying to teach people that if you lose any hope, maybe next life, you end up better. But no, because there is also another teaching in the Buddhism. The Buddhism it teaches people that life is a suffering life. Life is suffering. You have endless suffering. So the only hope is to escape from this life. So you combine them together. Life is endless suffering. And if you put hope in next life, you are not sure whether you end up better. So throughout history, those people who truly study Buddhism texts ended up committing suicide because there is no true hope and there is no true wisdom. But in our Bible, Psalm 90, this man of God, Moses, who had experienced so much of this God of history and Lord of heaven and earth, who himself experienced God's miracles so many times throughout his experience and leading the Israelite people throughout the wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, Moses had this prayer in Psalm 90. 
And in this psalm, Moses does talk about the brevity and suffering of life. He says, human life is very fragile. Because like flowers, it blossoms in the morning and then wither and fade away in the evening. You know, when I was a college student, no, college student, I was only about 18 years old, I finally passed my entrance exam into, co- into college in Taiwan, very, very difficult to get in. So in celebration of finishing that test, one of my friends and I, we went to see a movie, and the movie is Julia and Romeo. <laughs> and in that, there is a very theme song. It talks about a rose will bloom. It then will fade. So does a youth. So does the fairy is laid. Oh, that attracted me. Life is like a rose. It blossoms and then wither away. And every youth life is just like that. I started to search for wisdom. I started to search solution to that problem. And thank God, when I was graduating from college, I learned about Jesus. I heard about Jesus' story. And I found out that only hope and wisdom and assurance is from Jesus. Amen. So I followed Jesus. And I've been preaching mostly in Chinese, occasionally in English, so so many years. Whenever I go to preach and teach, I always want people to know God through Jesus because in Jesus we find the only hope to overcome death. Amen. Death is our final enemy. But through Jesus, we can overcome death. And that is the message we have from Paul. Now Paul says, wake up, you sleeper, and Christ will shine on you. Now that is very important to wake up. Wake up. Since I came to Brentwood Baptist Church, in my conversation with Mike Glenn, he keeps saying, my prayer for the American Great Awakening is to happen from 7777 Concord Road. And I say, amen to that. I said, I join you in praying for American Great Awakening to start from 7777 Concord Road. The Great Awakening, because in the Bible, it teaches us if we do not believe in Jesus, if we are not following Jesus, we are dead. And Chinese language, this great language in Chinese is very interesting. The Chinese language describing people who are dead uses this phrase for characters. Chang mian bu qi. Chang mian bu qi. Can you say that with me? Repeat after me, all right? Chang mian bu qi. You are not so confident. I say it again. Chang mian bu qi. Much better. But I want you to do the best. Okay? Let's say it loudly. All right? Chang mian bu qi. Now, let me, let me show you. The first word, chang, means long. And second word is mian, means sleep. And this word is composed of two parts. 
First part is I, and second part is Mian. And this place means closed. So people close their eyes when they sleep. I don't know how many of you have this problem of sleeping. If you cannot sleep well, you may want this. You want to close eye and sleep. <laughs> and if you only can sleep for a few moments, you may want to have a long sleep, 长眠 But the difficult part is next two words. Next two words means 不起 which means not rising up to walk again. Now, qi has two parts. First part is to walk, and second part is self. So when the person himself is sleeping, so much so that he cannot get up and walk again, there is something wrong. Because the worst situation is death. Now, the Bible. Teaches us people who do not follow Jesus, people who do not believe in Jesus, they are dead. They are in a long sleep. And what is the hope there? The gospel. It is when the gospel is delivered or preached. Or demonstrate to that person, and the person listens to the gospel and responded by faith. The person is awakened from the spiritual death, and that is what Paul is talking here. O、oh, sleeper, this is second person singular. O、oh, you sleeper, wake up and rise up. These two words, these two Greek words. Second person singular. Wake up and stand up. It implication is that when you trust in Jesus, you experience Jesus' power of resurrection. The power of Jesus' death and rising again from the the tomb is. For you, so that you become a wise person, you start to invest your life in a very wise way. Now I look at American life. What a blessing God has put on this country, with so much resources, so many higher education institutes. But sometimes I want to cry because people here. Do not know God. People here do not truly feel God. People here are wasting their lives by drinking wine and beer. So the college students, the first year freshmen, they are invited to call binge drinking. It is where they start to drink. First of all, drink beer, and then start to drink alcohol. They become alcoholics, waste their life. That's too bad. But here in the passage we have today, Paul is teaching us that instead of being drunk with wine, you must be filled by the Spirit. Now I don't know how many young college students or teenagers are in the congregation. This is my advice to you: stay away from beer. Stay away from wine. They may give you some kind of good taste. Actually, they are bad taste. <laughs> so be careful. Don't fall into that habit of getting drunk with wine. But on the contrary, Paul teaches us there is a better way of life, to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Now you ask me, Pastor Guo, how to be filled with the Spirit, and what does it mean for me to be filled with the Spirit? First of all, 
Believe in Jesus. Follow Jesus. And then seek God's wisdom every day, so that you can live as a true wise person. Now, Paul teaches: Be careful. Do not become foolish, but become wise. If you are wise in God. Then you learn how to seize the day. You know how to take every opportunity you have to learn, to live, and to invest every day that God gives you. That is true wisdom. And Paul says, "When we are filled by the Spirit, our conversation with each other, we are using the best words. Even here, he is talking about using psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to bless each other." Now. Here at Brentwood Baptist, our worship time is 60 minutes. The first 30 minutes is a precious time because when we are singing those songs, classical or contemporary, we are not only singing to God. Actually, we are talking to each other, using those hymns to bless each other. That is the spiritual life, and then second, spiritual life. To be filled with the Spirit is that whatever you do, singing or saying, you are doing that from the bottom of your heart to God, because God is watching you. So God hears you. God talks to you, and He knows you. So you are doing everything to God. Can you waste any moment when you know that you are living your life before God? You want to seize every opportunity. You don't want to waste any time. You want to serve God and bless other people. Thirdly, he says, giving thanks. For all things, to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are filled with the Spirit, you are a grateful person to God and to everyone else, because you give thanks to God for all things. Well, people say, "Well, I give God thanks to God when I am okay every time, but if something is wrong, how can I?" Give thanks to God. That is the true wisdom, because you know that God knows better. So you truly trust that God will never make a mistake, and you keep trusting in God. Now I want to end my sermon by telling a story. Now you all know China. In China, the gospel is spreading crazily. And we don't know what is going to happen in the next ten years, but at least people are turning away from Buddhism, and they are now trusting in Jesus. And there is a brother, maybe in his late fifties, whose last name is Chen. About thirty-five years ago, he attempted to do some so, so kind of capitalist enterprise. And he was caught and then put in prison, simply trying to make some money. And thank God, when he was in the prison, because the communist China threw a lot of pastors into the prison, so some pastor spread the gospel to him, so he believed in God and believed in Jesus, and then he started to pray continuously, and God answers his prayer. 
he was set free 69 days later. And when he came out from the prison, he had no money. So he ended up as called three-wheeler driver. Now this is a new term to you. Three-wheeler. It's an automobile, but has only three wheels. It is being used in China today. It is a taxi for short-term service for customers. So he was nothing, he was nobody, but he kept praying and trusting in God. Now today, his company is called Shen Li Ji Tuan, that means God's power group. And he has more than 20 manufacturing factories. His total assets is estimated at 1 billion China dollars, equivalent to about 140 US dollars. One day he was giving his own testimony. He said, 35 years ago, I was a three-wheel driver. I was nobody. But I trust in God. I follow Jesus. And God just took care of me and blessed me. And God knows what I need to do. And he led me to do what I need to do. Now, I am the president of God's power group. And God has given me opportunity to occupy three important positions in the government. One is nationally, the other is provincially, and the third is locally. I give thanks to God because God is alive and because Jesus is my shepherd. He would never let any one of his sheep get lost.